Welcome to this, our sixth session in the coding and robotics uh, classes that we've been holding. I trust you've had a wonderful weekend where you were, uh, uh, well, I know you're on holiday, so you must have been up to a little bit of mischief, but I hope that uh, those of you who have been with us during the past week have found some time over the weekend to experiment with the, all the stuff that we have been working with in the MS Aura Blocks platform. And I'm sure you have been creating, some of you, some really um, exciting animations of your own. So yes, I look forward to uh, seeing some of that, which we might not be able to do today, but sometime as the course progresses, um, I'm going to try and create an opportunity where you can display some of the programs that you have been creating, some of the code that you have been creating, and maybe maybe you can share it with me. But um, <clears throat> that said, welcome to lesson six again. For those of you who have just joined us, or if you have joined us for the first time, welcome to all of you. My name is Mr. AF Gabriel, and I am a senior information technology teacher for the Department of Education. And this special holiday program is brought to you by the Department of Basic Education in conjunction with Africa Teen Geeks. And so um, welcome to lesson six and let's, let's get on with it then. Now, uh, I just quickly want to um, recap because we, we didn't get to quite finish the animation that I was working with you on, on Friday. Uh, remember at the moment we, we're doing, we're writing code in which we can animate um, our sprites. Remember, eventually these sprites will be actual physical robots that will be hardware designed and created in a factory and our code will be giving them instructions and they will follow instructions just as they have been following those instructions over the past week as we've been moving things around on the screen. Um, and remember, those instructions when grouped together is called an, everybody all together, an algorithm. Yes, yes, well done, well done to all of you. Okay, now, yesterday I put on the screen, uh, well, not sorry, not yesterday, Friday, we put a ball on the screen and we made this ball bounce towards a, a barrier. I'm gonna put that on the screen for you again right now. But before I do that, I just want to show you this slide um, that's coming up on the screen now. Okay, right, this slide. Just to remind you that when you want, remember when we clicked uh, our first sprite, the, that robot guy, um, when we were moving him around, remember he was moving forward and then we animated him and we made him walk, right? And if you will remember correctly, he was pointing in the direction known as 90 degrees, that is to the right. Now watch my mouse point. If you look at the screen, you'll see my mouse is showing you this arrow, which is telling you the direction that the sprite will walk based on his rotation. Now, I wanted to just put the slide in to remind you that although we know that the Cartesian plane or a revolution, for those of you, I think you would have done that in maths by now, grade seven. Well, I don't know whether you, you are in this class because you were in grade seven in 2020 or whether you're going to be in grade seven this year, 2021. In any effect, I hope that you would have studied angles and that a revolution is known to be 360 degrees. But once again, MSR blocks is not quite programmed uh, to work with that revolution. So just take note of these slides. So um, you, you will eventually have the recording of the session. So um, if you forget, you can bring up the slide again at this stage in the recording, which will remind you the, that uh, the numbers that we must put in order to face the sprite in the direction that we want it to move. Right, so if you want to move your sprite to the right, like this, like this arrow is showing, then you must tell it your instruction. Remember, there's a little block called point in direction. I'll show you that block again, if you've forgotten. Um, that block says point in direction, and then you choose which direction you want it to point to. So if you say point in direction 90, uh, the sprite will move in this direction when you instruct it to move. Remember, point in direction doesn't make it move. It only turns the sprite to the direction that you want. If you want it to move, backwards or reverse the other way, well, then you must point, oops, that's the slide. Then you must point in this direction, which is kind of going to the left now, which is, we can, let's call it going backwards, right? 
Then you must say point in direction minus 90. Can you see the negative number there? So this is direction 90, that is direction minus 90. This is direction zero. You remember we reset the ball, the one that we were bouncing up and down the screen. We set it to point in direction zero because we didn't want it to go to the right. We wanted it to go up. So up is direction zero and down is point in direction 180, right? So you remember the slide um, when, when you need to do that, when you're doing your own animations. Right now, um, I'm going to just pause this presentation for the moment and we'll get back to it when we're ready. But what I wanna do right now is take you into uh, the MS Zora platform. And I've got this platform all set up for us here. Okay, so uh, let me close this Zoom meeting here. Sorry guys, let me just get my organizing right. Okay, I think you can see that now. Let me put that onto full screen. Okay, so to save us some time, well, doesn't seem that I saved us all that much time. Um, I'm, I've already logged into the MS uh, Blocks platform. My internet connection is bothering me again today. And well, here we all are. Uh, you can see that right now. And in this platform, we were working last Friday when we animated the ball. So this is the basic platform. I'm going to, if you remember, we did save that program and we called it bouncing ball. So I'm going to go back to my computer and I'm going to look for that. Uh, and here it is, bouncing ball. Click on open. And this was our bouncing ball program. Now, remember, last week I made that mistake too. I was trying to teach you. Uh, if you look at the bottom of the code here, you will see that we, this is the first program that we are using that is working with more than one sprite. We have two sprites. Okay, so what happens is in your script window, you have to write separate code instructions or algorithms for each of the sprites. So you'll see that our line, which is this sprite here, this red line, which is which we are using as a barrier for the top of the screen, um, doesn't have any script for it. But the ball, uh, we did write some script for the ball before we ran out of time on Friday. And our idea was that we were making this ball move towards the barrier and then bounce off the barrier. Then we also wanted it to bounce off the edge of the screen. Now, let me quickly remind you, <clears throat> if you look at the screen, you will see there are, that's the code that we have there. And code go to X00. You will remember. Um, again, let's actually, instead of me telling you everything, teaching, teaching, teaching all the time, through the chat, can anyone respond? Um, can you remember what zero zero does? Where does zero zero send the ball? Anybody? Okay, zero zero sends the ball to the center of the screen. So it will start uh, when the animation begins. The ball is actually now here. The zero, the center of the screen is somewhere here. And if we run the code, you'll find that the ball will start here and then start moving 10 steps. Now, remember we set the direction to zero. And remember those arrows I said to you? This is your direction. Set zero to go up, um, 180 to go down, 90 to go to the right, but minus 90 to go to the left. So we set it to zero because we want the ball to go up. Then we've got this loop here saying, if you're touching the line, and remember the sprite is called line, its name is down here at the bottom. Um, as soon as it's touching the line, we, we say repeat until, which means the ball will keep going up to the line until it is touching the line. The moment it's touching the line, this repeat block will end and it will no longer move up. But the next block will begin and then it will say, now repeat until it's touching the edge. Now the ball is touching the line. It's not touching the edge at this time. So then it'll start moving down. And again, same story. Uh, positive will move in the direction that the, uh, that the sprite is facing, in this case up. 
but negative numbers will move in the opposite direction. That will move the ball down towards the bottom. And then it says, repeat until you are touching the edge. Now note that the edge is not just the bottom, the edge is any corner of the screen, the top edge. The top edge is blocked now because the, this line is covering the entire thing. Um, so it won't ever get to the top edge, but this left, this right, and this bottom are all called the edge of the screen. So as soon as it's touching the edge, this repeat block will finish. But then we've also got a forever block there. So when this block finishes, it's going to come here and go all the way back up to the top again, and then start moving towards the barrier again. So you can see this, these two things will continue forever and the ball will bounce between the line and the bottom. So let's uh, run this code so that we can see what happens. Okay, I stopped it. Right, and also let's put it onto the full screen. It is seeming a bit slow at the moment. Right, and here we go. Now watch very carefully as our code runs. So now the ball goes up and then it hits the edge. And the ball goes up, hits the barrier, and it goes down. When it's moving up and moving down, it's moving 10 steps at a time. Uh, because we chose such a large number like 10, you'll find that the you can see that the ball is moving in a jerky kind of way. Uh, you can increase the speed and move it at smaller increments, like moving it at five instead of moving 10 steps and so on, right? But all of those things, again, like I said, you can experiment on your own. Let's get it back to the small screen. So you can see that the ball is following this code, moving up and down the screen. That's good. Okay, now let's write a simple script for the line, not so that we are wasting too much of time, right? Okay. Okay, so let's write some code for the line, right? Okay, so here's our line. We've got no code for the line. So we've got to go to controls, uh, sorry, events. And we're going to drag a, when a flag is clicked, we want the lines code and the ball's code to run at the same time. So when the flag is clicked, the click, sorry, the computer will run the code for the ball. And this is the ball, when flag is clicked and also for the line at the same time. So both these codes will run at the same time. Now, what we wanna do with the line is just a simple thing. We just, when the ball hits it, we just want to change its color, right? Now we can't put a loop there because we don't want its color to keep changing. We want the color just to change once. So we will put this control. We'll put a control called wait until. Now I want, this is a new control that we haven't used. It is not a loop. Notice it's a single block. Nothing goes in it. It's just a single block. And what is it going to happen here is that as soon as the ball, we, we're going to say wait until, and we're going to say this uh, in the motion. Wait until, sorry, the sensing. Wait until the ball, the beach ball, now watch how we, let me just demonstrate. Can you see that this is a sensor? I did teach you about the sensing components as well on Friday. Uh, if I just stop the ball from bouncing around. Right, so uh, sensing is when we are able to see what the person who's using the computer, remember the person using our program is called the user. So when the user uh, presses something or when something happens, on the screen, we can uh, make a decision to do something. So uh, this one is touching the mouse pointer. Let's change it to say touching the beach ball, right? Now, remember this code is for the line, which means it's the line is going to wait until it's touching the beach ball. So when the line and the beach ball are touching, because this code is in the line. So the line is waiting for this code. It says, wait until touching the beach ball. The moment the beach ball touches the line, the line will activate. What do we want the line to do? Well, we want it to change color. And let's just 
go to the looks and that's where the change would be. And you can see out here at the bottom, uh, change, oh, I went too far. Uh, change color effect by 25. Uh, all right, so these are all the different colors. I, you know, I don't know, you'll have to just, let's just say 50 and see what color it changes to. Um, then let's just, now remember, if we, if we, if we, if we put a loop here, it's going to keep flickering because you'll keep say, seeing it change the color. So we will say, um, let's make it wait a second. And then we'll put, we'll erase that effect. Okay, so um, there should be a clear graphics effects here. So see what's going to happen? You've put an effect. This is called a graphics effect. And I'm going to show you some other effects now as we go along. But this is a graphic effect. And we'll change the color, wait a second, and then uh, clear it. So it'll go back to being red. So you'll just note that, OK, as soon as the ball hits the barrier, it changes color. So you'll also notice it hitting. Now, remember, if we leave the code like this, the color will just change one time. So let's run the code as it is and see what happens. So, okay, so that number 50 is, was green. Then it bounces. Remember the, the ball is following it, its code as well. And there's the ball code there. So it's doing that. Now the line is also following its code. Now when the ball touches the line a second time, it doesn't change any color. And the reason for that, if you look at our code, we the, the line has run its code. It's done there, 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 there. It's here now, and there's no more instructions. So when it comes to this last thing, the line will stop running all of its code. You can see that the block is not highlighted. If you go to the ball block, can you see that this block is got a little glow around it? This glow indicates that the program is running these instructions as we speak. And you can see on the right-hand side, the ball is moving because it's continuously running these instructions. Why is it continually doing that? Because we have a forever loop here. So this will always glow until we press the stop button to stop the program like so. And you can see the glow has um, removed itself from around the code to indicate that nothing, no sprites are now running any code. Let's go back to our line. And let's add a loop there. And that will be a forever loop as well. And let's let the loop grab everything. Right, can you see how I did that? I locked it so that this loop is now continuously around all of this. And this, this code will run forever as well, which means the barrier line will always wait until the beach ball is touching it. It'll quickly change the color, wait for a second, and, and clear the color. So, and remember the original color was red. So when it clears, it goes back to its original, the way the sprite, the original costume, which of course was just a red line. Now let's run this code together. And the line changes to green and back to red. When the ball hits it again, changes to green and then changes back to red. Changes to green and so on. And, and you can see now that uh, the line is now changing color along with the ball. And so we've now got a program which animates both the sprites and both of them do something. Uh, when, um, when we sense any particular thing has happened and what we've sensed is that the two sprites come into, into contact uh, with each other, yeah. So that's kind of cool, isn't it? Okay. Um, let's look and see what sounds we've got here. Let's add a sound effect to it. What is this? Okay, haha, <laughs> that sounds like a bouncing ball. Did you guys hear that? Okay, let's add some sound effects. Here's to be interesting. Okay, let's go, sorry, back to our code. Okay, so um, let's go to sound. That sound, there was another sound that was really annoying. Okay, as soon as the ball touches the barrier, um, when it's touching the line, let's play this pops. Well, not the pop sound. Oh, that's a terrible sound. Yeah, that's, that's really annoying. Let's change that to, uh, what was that? Basketball bounce. Okay, let, let's try that one, right? And let's play it now. You see that? 
So it played that because at this point in time, the ball was touching the line. So it runs this code. This code is finished. It's, it's touching the line out. So it stops. It sees this play sound. So it plays the sound and then starts moving to the bottom. If we put that same sound effect um, at the end here, after this loop, let's get the right spot now. There we go. Um, let's stop this. Okay, so remember, here's the repeat loop. Watch as I point to the block. That's that's the block that's out, that's repeating. We don't want the sound to be inside that loop because then the sound will keep repeating as well. Every time it moves, it will make that sound, which will be quite annoying. We only want it to make the sound as soon as it touches the barrier. So we have the illusion that it's bouncing off the barrier. So as soon as it's touching the barrier, this repeat block will end. The code, the program will then come here. It'll run this line, make the bouncing sound. Then it'll start running this repeat loop. And this repeat loop makes it move towards the edge because it's moving down. As soon as it's touching the edge, this loop will be done. It will stop. That means the ball is touching the edge because we said repeat until touching the edge. At that point, you can play another sound. And oops, that pop sound was really annoying. The bounce sound is cool. And now look, off, uh, look at the effect that we achieve. Okay, um, let's go, well, let, let's leave that as 10. Let's change the bottom one. Let's make it go to the bottom a little faster. Right, can you see now I increased the number of, of steps for the ball to move down and uh, it moves down much faster, right? Another way of increasing its speed, let's, let's make that 10 again. Okay, I also, can you see what I've done there? I, I increased the weight state to 0 0.05, and that also gives the, it's still moving minus 10 steps, but because the ball is waiting much less time, um, it's it's now going to appear that it's, it's moving a lot faster, right? Now let's change that to maybe 0 0.01. Now see how fast it's pushing its way all down to the bottom. It's moving faster going down, right? If I want it to go faster going up, I can also change that here to 0 0.05 and it moves slightly faster going up. Okay, so can you see? We have two ways of controlling the weight. We can increase the number of steps. The problem with increasing the number of steps, obviously, is that the ball will look like it's jumping. If we make that, now it's moving 10 steps at a time. If we make that 30 or 50, it will have this very jerky movement up and down. So maybe decreasing the delay um, is a better uh, option than uh, doing, doing that. Okay, so uh, we've got this really cool program now with the ball moving up and down the screen um, and it's bouncing and we even got a sound effect. Somebody asked me about sound effects last week. So I did say that we'll come to this moment. Oops, sorry, I started that by accident. Um, and I did say that we'll add a little bit of sound. And so here we are. Now, I'm going to just pause there for the moment and check. Um, does anybody have any questions? Um, if you'd like to speak at this point in time, I will give you the opportunity to raise your hand. We're almost halfway through the class for today. Right. Anybody want to ask a question about any everything that we're doing so far? Okay, uh, let's take uh, let's take Kira. I'm not sure if any of you have um, and I know some of you are using um, I know some of you are using your um, parents' phones and things. So um, 
Okay, Kira, I don't know what's happening here. Sorry guys, my, my mouse is just a bit faulty. So when I unmute you, right. Sorry, Libra Singh, okay, you are uh, you are good to go. Hi, sir. Hello, how are you? Sir. Good morning. Good are you? I'm good, I'm good. What's your question? So how do we um, turn the ball to whatever, spin the ball, I mean? All right, okay. Um, do you mean spin it or do you mean make it move in a different direction? Yeah spin it, turn it, not make it move in a different direction. Okay, how you can turn the ball is you, um, I'm not gonna do that right now, but what you can do is obviously point it in a different direction. Try, try yes, pointing it in a different direction, put that in a loop and you'll see it, it will start to turn around. Thank you for your question. Mm -hmm. Okay, good question. Uh, this, this, by the way, before we, we, we take any more questions, there are so many things that we can do with animation. And remember, there's a lot that we want to try to cover in this holiday program. Um, you'll see now that we have barely scratched the surface with coding. And um, I'm hoping uh, that for in terms of animation per se, this will be, I know I wanted to start here because it's a very exciting part to be at. Animation and seeing things move and happen on the screen is already immediately exciting. So it's a good place to be but there's a lot more to coding than just animation. So I wanna to get to some other aspects of programming as well. I am gonna show you a few more other effects. So um, if there are no more questions, any questions about what we've done or what we're doing? I'll just give a few more minutes. Okay. Um, right now, um, I'm gonna teach you something new now, okay? You all ready? This is gonna be cool. All right. I'm gonna teach you something called, you're gonna learn a function now, right? And, and this function, and for the first time, we'll be using the green guys. So can you see slowly as we've been progressing, I've been introducing you to new uh, sections of coding. So we started with using the motion and the looks. Today, we added some sound. We've used the events, we've used the controls, we've used the sensing. So we've used everything so far up above this green one. And we haven't used, well, we don't use my blocks so much because that's just for you to save your own blocks. But we will come to variables, maybe, maybe in our next lesson. But for now, I want to take you to the operators. Now, let's introduce you to this, these green guys. Firstly, what are operators? Now, if you, in primary school, you would have all done math from like kind of grade one. And somewhere along the line, and I'm, I'm very old now, so I forgot how far down it is when they start teaching us how to add and subtract and multiply and things like that. Um, but in actual fact, they, they, those things, when they first were introduced to you, they, you were told that those are known as the four basic operations from, from maths, for maths, right? Remember that? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. So operators, uh, is the uh, verb for for the idea of an operation. And if you look here, you will see that with this operator, we can add things. With this operator, we can subtract things. With this operator, now, can you see this is an, this is an asterisk, star. Where is the star? The star is on the number eight on the keyboard. You have to press the shift button to get it because it shares uh, a space with the number eight, not the not on the numerical keypad on the right hand side of your keyboard, but on the numbers that are on top of the keyboard below the function keys. If you go to the number eight, you will see an asterisk. Notice that there is no multiplication on a computer keyboard, no multiplication sign. The reason for that is because if you look at the, the letter X, which is right at the bottom, second last row on the left hand side of your keyboard, it's next to Z. The X look actually itself looks like a multiplication sign. So due to the confusion of an X symbol um, 
and the multiplication sign becoming confused, that we could confuse the alphabet letter X with multiplication, uh, it was not wise to use the normal symbol for multiplication that maths uses. And so for multiplication on a computer, we usually use this asterisk. It's, you can call it a star, but its official name is an asterisk. And of course, the same with division. Um, there is no division symbol on a keyboard due to the fact that it's made up of two points and a line, which can be confused with dots, full stops, and subtractions and dashes. So they've chosen to use this symbol, which is called a forward slash, right? Or a slash. And that is known as division. So that's when we want to divide things. And uh, just quickly to browse, and we're not going to use any of these today. There's comparing two numbers greater than, less than, checking if things are equal to, and so on and so on. I don't want to overwhelm you with all the operators. We're going to, I'm going to introduce you to them as we need them. So we're going to not use these today. We're going to use this one. Now let me drag this one into the window and look at this. Right now, uh, let's not unmute and mute because it takes so long. But if you want to use the chat, um, I'm going to ask this question. Does anybody want to say um, what you think this green operator does for us? Okay. There are some people on the chat asking about the code. Um, just hold on, everybody. I will I will show you the code again um, in a moment. Let's just finish this thing. Um, okay, so anyone want to guess what this green code on the screen is going to do for us? Okay, we've got some answers coming in. Uh, it picks a random number between one and 10. Right, excellent, excellent. And what it's gonna do is that if we do that, we can get the computer to pick numbers for us. And we can create the concept of a random event in which something can change because the computer will pick a different number each time. Excellent, right, you guys are very smart. Thank you, Trevor, thank you, Makwede. I hope I got your names right. Both of you have answered that question correctly. Now, let's, um, let's, let's see what I wanna do with the random 10. Uh, I'm gonna go here. Can you see what I've done now? Can you see that this move symbol is we've put 10 in it and we've been picking numbers from, from here all this time, but you can see that it's a, it's a, it's an oval shape, a round shape, right? Um, and this is, this is an oval, oval or round, right? Can you see that? Can you see this, this is a bit more oval because it's taking more space. It looks round now because 10 is a small digit, but it can stretch and become more overly. So oval or round, uh, same concept in terms of where blocks can fit, which means that this block can fit in there. If you look at this one, let's just look at this uh, one that we didn't talk about. This is again, the hexagon shape bo uh, block with the top or bottom part of the hexagon getting longer because it tries to fit in everything that we want to say. This is telling you that this hexagon shape can't fit in there. If I, if I try to put it in, um, it, it's not quite gonna you know, fit in there. And you see, it goes in, but it's not gonna run the code properly. It's not meant to go there. Okay, this one is meant to fit in there. So remember always to fit the blocks in that, that seem to fit the shape that you're in. Otherwise the code won't work. Right. It'll, you notice, can you see, as I bring it close, now it wants to go there. Can you see the word line highlighted? If I, if I, I'm holding my mouse down now, right? So I'm holding the mouse down, I'm grabbing it, and now I'm moving it around with the mouse. So I can move it anywhere right? as I'm moving it. Can you see it wants to, it, the, the code will tell you where it can go. So the code, uh, for the block that wants to fit it gets highlighted. So uh, now can you see that the, the 10 space where it says move 10 is brightening up. If I move it away, it's, it's not bright anymore, move closer. So that's how you know when you're ready to fit the block there. So you don't want it to go there. You don't want it to go there. As soon as the space that you want it to go is highlighted, you can leave the mouse. I'm holding the left pointer down. Now I'm going to pick my finger up off the pointer and you can see immediately that block slips into place. And it's now combined with the move instruction. So what we have now done 
is you've combined two instructions. You said move so many steps, but now you didn't say specifically 10 steps. You said pick a random number from one to 10. So it could pick one. And remember one and 10 are included by the way, pick random one to 10, it will pick, it's not between. So if we say between one and 10, it means we're not including one and we're not including 10. But random one to 10 means you can pick one and you can pick 10. But this instruction will not go more than 10 and it will not go less than one. So now every time the ball goes up, it will not go up at the same speed. Let's run the code to see what this random does. Bounced, went down pretty fast. Now, can you see it's going up a little slower, right? And it's going down fast. And now it's going up at a different speed. And it's going up at a different speed. Okay, let's press stop, right? Uh, now let's put another random one at the bottom, right? Now, before I put this random one at the bottom, Okay, that's gonna be here, right? Now, you'll notice that for the, for, for the ball to move down, we have to, it's gotta be a negative number. Now, good news. You see this numbers in there? Now watch again, I'm snapping it into place. Watch, I'm moving it there. As soon as uh, it's highlighted, I can let go and, it, and, and it'll snap into place. So it fits in there. Now we're saying pick a random number from one to 10. If we do that, the code is gonna get stuck because the ball needs, a negative number to go down. Let's just see. Sometimes your programs will do all funny things and go wrong. Now, can you see? It's, it's completely stuck now. It's malfunctioning. Ooh, we don't want it to do that. Why is it doing that? Because we're making the ball go up when it touches the barrier. And then when it's, uh, uh, it's supposed to be touching the edge, we're making it go up. So the ball keeps going up. Can you see it went past that, touching the edge now? The top is an edge, but we keep seeing picking a random number from one to 10 and anything positive will make the ball want to go up. So now the ball keeps trying to go up and it keeps banging the top edge and it keeps making that bouncing sound because it keeps bouncing off the top edge because it keeps wanting to go up. So if we want the ball to go down, we need it to pick a negative number. No problem, guys. You see these two things here? You can click in there just like you can click on any round section of code and you can change the numbers to be anything that you want. So on its own, it'll pick a number from one to 10, but you can control that. Aren't you lucky? Isn't it cool? Okay, so let's go. We want you to go down. So down will be, let's say we said minus 10 all the way up to minus one. Now minus 10 to minus one, remember, when you pick a random number, you've got to put the smaller number first on the left, smaller number here, bigger number there. So I put minus 10 to one because minus 10 is way to the left of the number line. Minus one is closer to the zero. So that's the smaller number. Now let's run our code and it's up. Now it's going down at some speed and now it's picked a random number and it's going up and it's picked a random number. It's going, going a bit faster going down with the moves. Right, now let's, let's say minus 30 to one for going down, right? So we'll make it go down even faster. It might be, can you see? Oh, really fast, it picked a big number there. Again, well, when I say quite a small number because it's going down quite fast, fast down, up, fast down. Right, why is it going faster down all the time? Because we've got greater gaps. We're allowing it to go down at steps of minus 30 at a time. So it can jump minus 30, minus 30. When it's going up, it's only jumping in steps of 10. Now, I can't uh, jump the ball more than 10 because it, the width of this line is about 10 pixels. So there's a possibility that if the ball comes here and then I say move 10, it actually might move past the barrier. And then because you, I'm asking you to move at a bigger spot, it's not touching the barrier now, but it can move 10 if I give it a move 10 instruction and the edge of the ball will pass the barrier and not be able to touch the barrier. So you can't actually move the ball faster by moving the gaps. If you want it to move faster going up, you will have to change uh, the weight how long it waits between moves. But just to show you, let's see what happens if you put 30 there and run the program, right? So if you see it went to the barrier there, 
And that's kind of okay because it didn't choose a big number like 30. And there we go, bang. It picked a big number like 30, which was bigger than the distance between the barrier than the size of the barrier and the ball was able to jump 30 steps past the barrier. Now it's hitting the edge and it's trying to run this code, but it keeps hitting the edge. So we've got to be very careful with these things. Can you see all these small things? This is what I'm demonstrating to you now is called logic. In fact, if you put 30, you might know, if you didn't realize that the width of the barrier is part of the problem, you will now look at this ball hitting the top of the barrier and try to figure out now how on earth uh, and why is it not working? Okay, so those are the things uh, that you would have to note. All right, now let's suppose we wanted the ball to move fast when it goes up, right? Let's pick a random number from one to 10. And um, let's, how are we going to get this random number from one to 10 to work for this? Because this is a decimal number now. We, we don't want it to wait 10 seconds. Imagine 10 seconds between count to 10 before the ball moves, that's like way too slow. So we can't do that. Um, and how can we solve that problem? You know, I never quite tested the random number to see if you can put decimals there. We probably could. Let's try. Okay, so let's wait. Uh, let's pick a number from um, a small number like 0 0.05 to a bigger number like 0 0.1. Now remember, your smaller number must be there. 0 0.05 is much smaller than 0 0.01. So it's, now we'll pick a random number there, let's run it. Okay, so it picked a really slow number there, pass down. Now it's going back up. Okay. All right. I'm not sure if that's working. Let's take this out now. We don't want that there. And let's make it move 10 steps at a time. It's moving 10 steps there. Yes, it is kind of working. Let's put a really small number here. Let's go from 0, 0 0.01 uh, to 0. Okay, let's leave that at 0 0.1. One hundredth of a second when it goes up. And let's just put, let's put one second and, and see if it really moves slowly, like one second. All right, there we go. Now it's moving up at one second at a time, which is taking pretty long. And now it's going down fast. Ah, see, now it's going up pretty slowly because it's, it's, it's picking like maybe one second or, or point, point zero 0.09 seconds. I think that's that's way too slow to make the ball go up. So let's really change that there to 0 0.0, 0 0.5. Maybe 0 0.5 is nice. There we go. That's a decent speed. Oh, that's half a second. Even half a second is, yeah, I know guys, that's way too slow too. Let's make it 0 0.1. Okay, there we go. It's moving fairly fast up, down. Okay, now what have we learned here? We have learned how to use the random function in which you can now control and randomize a number. So this ball can bounce um, any, any kind of um, um, speed and it can change its speed randomly as you go up and as you go down, and of course, we've in, 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 in included that sound effect um, into the recording as well. So it now, um, um, we have this idea that the ball is moving at different speeds. And I want to repeat that a word I've been using on you, artificial intelligence, right? When, when the user is watching this ball move, he's thinking, hey, look, it's moving fast, then it's moving slow. And it seems like the ball knows what it's doing. It seems like the ball can make a choice to change its speed. But in actual fact, again, it's not doing anything. It is just following your instructions. You have controlled that by the random number. Okay, so um, 
Uh, well, so yeah, yeah. So that's uh, that's the idea of the random. Um, I'm just going to put the code for the line on the screen. Somebody in the chat earlier wanted to see the code for the line, and I don't attempt to, um, you know, um, copy out this code right now. Remember, you're going to have this video. It will be uploaded to YouTube sometimes towards the late afternoon, and when you download the video, uh, you can just pause it at this spot here, and. Um, and then you can obviously take your time with it because you won't be online or sharing screen with me. Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, now, I do want to show you one more thing. And I save this because uh, I, I, again, I know there's some of you and I'm still not too sure if I'm moving too fast for everybody in the room. We've done quite a lot of exciting stuff right now and I hope I haven't lost anybody. For those of you who join a bit late, you will seem quite confused. We have done lots of code since we started on the first day, which is a week ago now. So the best thing for you to do before you just suddenly join up on the class is um, you know, download all the videos from YouTube and, and watch them all one after the other and experiment with them so you can get to where we are right now, okay? Um, also, I told you guys, I, I can see that our numbers are more or less stable. I'm a bit disappointed that you didn't share all this information with all your friends and tell them what interesting things you're doing in coding and robotics on these absolutely free online classes. Well, it's still not too late. Uh, remember, if you are asking somebody to join up, remember to tell them to download all the previous lessons um, from the grade seven uh, video portal on YouTube and catch themselves up before they, they join up. Okay, so that is our bouncing ball program. Um, I'm also not gonna save it. I can write up the code anytime I want to, but you have it all now. I did write something for you now, guys, please note, I'm gonna show you something because I know a lot of you are, you know, you, just from the questions that you asked me that you're already curious about how we can do things and how can, things can be different. So how we can do more. So I'm putting up some code. And again, I'm not gonna labor it. I'm not gonna teach it because it, it uses a lot more of the operators that are here, which I didn't teach you yet, but I know some of you are smart and maybe you'll look at that code and figure out how to use it. So I'm gonna do that. I'm not gonna explain it because I don't wanna confuse anybody else. But I also, for those of you who are high flyers and you are smart, I don't wanna hold you back also. So I'm gonna put some slight, not, not hectic too, but definitely slightly more advanced code. Same with the ball and the barrier to show you what really cool things you can do when it comes to animating stuff. And again, when you download the video, you can pause it and you can see what I've done and you can you know fiddle around with it. Maybe we'll get to some of those instructions later on in the week, but in terms of animation, I'm not gonna do too much more. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold off on this one. And with all you've been taught by me so far, you can actually create some really, very really interesting animations. So from my computer, I'm going to uh, load another uh, program uh, that I wrote up. It, it will take me almost uh, well, a long time to write it up with you online. And remember, this is only for those of you who you know uh, want to jump a little bit forward with things. So, you can see um, what we are doing. All right, I, I put that um, number on the screen. Now, this program also uses a thing from this block, the variable block, which I'm still to teach you. That's gonna be our next lesson. I think we will get to variables tomorrow. So you will use one of these goodies tomorrow. Um, and I want you to see that this is the code for the line. It's unchanged, we're changing its color. But you'll see the, the code for the ball is markedly different, right? If you look at this section, you'll see that it's just the repeat, there's a repeat until statement that has been largely changed and it's using some of these operators here. I am gonna teach you these things as we go along. We are using the random again, and I'm using this um, to get the ball to bounce all over the screen and not just up and down. Just a simple thing like that requires a little bit more coding. Let's run the program so you can see how it runs now. Okay, I, there's no sound effects in this one, but can you see now I've made the ball bounce all over the screen. Now it's going down, up. Now it's going to the right. It's the edge, goes back to the barrier. The barrier changes color, then it goes back to the right. Okay, 
it's the barrier and now it's going the other way. Okay, so can you see how this ball is now bouncing all over the screen? It doesn't matter to which edge it comes to. Remember, the edge of the screen is denoted as the edge. And uh, the ball can bounce all over. Now, there was this old game. I forgot what they call it, man. Uh, it's an, it was an old arcade game in which a ball bounces up and down on the screen. And you have a little a label at the uh, like a ladle at the bottom and you can move it to the left or the right and wherever the ball is going you have got to get it to that spot so that um so that, and then and when it bounces or hits that spot so when it's touching that sprite you must get it to bounce off you and you can play until the until the ball until you miss the ball right so i want you to create that i want to see now if any of you can take the bouncing ball code and we can add that little label at the bottom. You can see this is all my code for the ball that's bouncing up and down on the screen. Okay, so as you can see, interesting things can be done. I'll see, maybe I'll write a little bit of that code for you uh, later today and I'll post it up just, again, this is just out of interest, right? I haven't, you'll see this part is very looking a bit complex. I don't expect any of you to understand what's happening, but some of you might be able to figure it out. And so I'm just leaving it here for you to have a look at. Uh, it's on the video. So in fact, uh, the code thing, let's make it a little bit bigger so you can see uh, most of it. And let's go a little bit smaller with size. Oh, I'm, I'm magnifying it, right? Let's drop it more. Right, so that's all the code for the ball, right? So when you download this video, uh, you will have this code which you can experiment with to make the ball move up and down and all over the screen. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. Okay, now um, we've only got seven minutes left. And in the last bit of time, um, again, I'm going to just um, leave the floor open for any possible questions that you might have, because I've got some homework for you to do. I want to I give you some work. Before I do that, I just wanna see if anybody has any questions. If you do, uh, ask, them, ask them via the chat. I don't want to unmute anybody right now. Uh, brick breaker. Maguire is saying the game is brick breaker. I forgot. I just I can't remember. And there's, there are lots of games that have that up and down concept, right? Okay. Um, any questions before I just go over to the last few thoughts before we close off the class for today? No. You guys are ask, answering for everybody. Hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, okay, good. So everybody seems to be kind of okay. All right. Now, let me go to these sprites. Um, right, okay. So I'm gonna, let's just clear this up. And let's create a new piece of code. Um, all right, let's go to the sprites. I'm looking for some cars. Ah, here we go. We've got a car. Let's put, let's add that sprite. And, uh, let's, let's trash this sprite. And let's add the other car, the green one. Okay, aha, look at that, okay. Okay, and let's put this one there. Okay, so we can just note their positions for their starting uh, uh, position. Okay, and all right, let's just use the edge of the sky. I was going to put a barrier there, but we don't have much screen space. So guys, you're ready for your homework for today. All right, your homework is as follows. What you're going to do is you're going to write some code and, and the, remember the direction of the car. Now we don't want it to go up like the ball. We want this car to move to the right of the screen, right? So it's already pointing in the right direction, 90 degrees. If you click on this sprite, this sprite is also pointing in 90 direction. So when you click move, when you give it a move instruction, it's going to move to the right. Okay, now 
Your homework is you're going to use the random instruction and you're going to use uh, either the weight or the move, whichever you want to use first, to get these cars to race each other. Remember, this will have a random speed. This will have a random speed. The computer will pick the speed at which the car moves. How will it pick the speed? You can change either the weight state so that it moves faster between each thing or the number of steps. Remember, use the same for both the cars. Uh, it may not be the same. And my, my, one car might always win, right? The first car to touch the edge of the screen will be the winning car, right? The first car to touch the edge of the screen will be the winning car. Whichever car wins the race, put a, a, um, a message on the screen above the sprite to say which car is the winner. So um, that would be an interesting program because it's going to test your abilities. Now you're writing some own code. You'll have to sit and figure and think and which car will be winning the race. That really is going to be your work for today. I will show you the code for the program um, when I see you tomorrow. And this program also um, introduces you to another control structure and give you a clue called the if statement, right? So we're gonna use the if statement tomorrow and we will introduce you to a variable tomorrow. So we'll do some exciting stuff and we'll still use all those things in connection with animation. Okay, and so uh, that brings us to the end of the targets for what we wanted to complete for today, right? I, I want to give you enough time to experiment. I don't want to throw too much new knowledge for you. So you, use, you learn to use the random feature today, which is a very interesting feature for you to experiment with. For those of you who want a little bit more, you can have a look at that bouncing ball program where the ball is bouncing all over the screen. And uh, you can see if you can make some sense of it and experiment with your sprites. Change the ball to some other sprite also to see what happens. So <clears throat> there's a lot for you to fiddle and experiment with based on what I've shown you today. And that's the best way to learn program. Uh, you, there's not one way to use an instruction. There's not one way to use a random instruction. I showed you. Uh, I don't. There isn't time to keep showing you all the ways the random instruction can be used. You must now go and take sprites and fiddle with it, see what works, see what doesn't work, it gets stuck and so on. So uh, that's all part of it. Even when I'm coding, things go wrong and it does the wrong thing and I have to go back and fix and adjust the code. That's the whole point of coding. Okay, so let's just see. At any rate, even if you can't figure out who's gonna be the winner, at least you should be able to write code for each of the cars. And, and at least get them to race to the end. Um, so you remember, you have to write code for each of the sprites and you're gonna use the, the repeat until because when it touches the edge, the race is over, the car stops. No need for a forever loop. Write code for this sprite, write code for that sprite and watch them race, okay? And I'll add, add the if statement with you as part of tomorrow's class. Well done to all of you again. Uh, as always, we've run out of time. This hour went really fast. <laughs> I did have one or two more things that I wanted to do, but it's fine. We'll add that all up tom in tomorrow's class where we're gonna use, um, where we're gonna teach you how to use some variables. We'll look at this last block out here. So guys, again, once again, from the Department of Education and Teen Africa Geeks, I wanna thank you for joining us. Um, guys, please tell your friends. Uh, this class size is still only less than 30. Um, I'm, I'm hoping we could we could uh, infect more people with this exciting idea of robots and coding. Uh, but otherwise, have a good afternoon, all of you. Enjoy getting the cars to race. I look forward to your success tomorrow, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Well done to you today, and have a good, good afternoon. Enjoy the